growing up in Vaimoso, I think one of the significant things I have heard from my grandmother was when she talks about during the days of the Mau, Iaso Ole Mau. That's all we heard from her. And then as kids, our playhouse used to be the Mau house, where kids like myself would be playing, jumping off the the Mau house with the, the wording up the top, Samoa Mo Samoa. I'd just like to take this opportunity to really acknowledge those women who were brave enough to take over their men's roles and continue to protest about the mistreatment of Samoan people at the time of the New Zealand administration. Talafalaba. My name is Pepe Robertson. I am now living in Wellington, as I have been for just over 50 years since I came from Samoa. I'm from Vaimoso. That's where I originally came from. We were never told through school about what happened the history of Samoa and anything to do with the Mau, we were never really um, told about that history. The only time I sort of heard and saw what happened, read about it, was when I went to Teachers College in Wellington. And part of the assignment was uh, to review a book. But it just happened that during that time, uh, Michael Fields' book about the Mau in Samoa came out and it was a chance for me to look at that and the horrific things that happened during that time of the Mau. There were two parts of Samoa. The Germans and the Americans divided the country where America owned eastern Samoa and Germany owned Western Samoa, which used to be called German Samoa. The British were interested and they quietly just took over and kicked the Germans out and the British took over the administration of Western Samoa. New Zealand was uh, appointed by Britain to um, take over the administration of Western Samoa, of German Samoa. They were Marines that came over to um, help the government of the day and the, um, the administration from New Zealand to do what they want to do in Samoa. The Mao is an organisation of Samoans who disagree with the government. So 90% of Samoans were members of the, the Mao movement in Samoa at the time. The Mau movement had a uniform. These uh, lava lovers that they had, the men, uh, navy blue, and um, they have a, a white stripe going down the bottom. So the New Zealand administration or the government wanted them not to wear those um, lava lovers because it belongs to the Mau. So the New Zealand Marines tried to take the white stripe off their lava lovers. Black Saturday was a march from Vaimoso, that was my village, coming to town to meet some of their leaders who were jailed in New Zealand and they finished their jail time in New Zealand. They were coming back and the 
my movement were marching into town to meet them. It was a peaceful march. They didn't have any weapons or anything. They were just going to town to meet and welcome these people home. And that's when the New Zealand Marines uh, or soldiers um, shot through the, um, the, uh, the march, which also um, killed Tamasese, who was one of the Mo leaders during that time, and about eight or nine men that were actually killed and lots of people were injured. I learned a little bit more about it after reading The Mo of Samoa by Michael Field. And I think that was one of the most horrible things to read about it. In the book, my grandmother was quoted in there that they asked, the, the courts asked her um, during the court case about Mingao, which we heard about Mingao, this old man that died in, uh, who was also our grandfather, my grandfather. Uh, but we never really knew how he died or how horrible it was. But just reading about it and about that and what my grandmother was asked, how did he die? And then she said her husband had nine bullets holes on his lava lava and he also had some on his feet and he, she talked about there was why he died. He actually was trying to cover to poor Tamasese from the, the machine gun bullets. And it makes sense to look at how many bullets that he had. He was trying to, um, he hugged him. He fell in front of uh, him to, to stop the bullets from hitting their leader. And I think that was the first time we, all of us kids, my the grandchildren knew what actually happened in our family, we didn't know that he was gunned down. This old man, Mingao, that um, she was talking about and we knew about him growing up, that he died in the mode, that was all we knew. But I think what she was trying to, to do was to protect us from the horrifying way he died during this time. And it was very close to home to us. Um, but I, I thought after I read her and came across her name in the book, I wished I'd known it so that I can actually talk to her. But she'd been passed away a long time then. After Black Saturday, a lot of the men's men were taken to prison in Samoa. The government wanted them to um, disband and uh, not happen, and uh, they took off to the bush. They went bush. And um, so the women took over, the women of Samoa, and the women's mode took over the role of the men then because they, there were no men. They, they were hunted down by the administration and the soldiers and the Marines. Women also um, did protest like the men, very peaceful uh, protests. They weren't supposed to, but the women protested everywhere, all around the country. I think one of the, the things that I was so impressed about how the women were going from one village to another, walking. If they haven't got a car, they'll just go to from one village to another village to really promote the Mao movement. January the 1st, 1962. And with the new year comes the first independent Polynesian state of the 20th century, Western Samoa. I came to New Zealand in 1967. I was about 27. What was I expecting? Exactly what I saw. I really... It was fascinating what I saw at the airport to start with and terrifying too at the same time if someone was there to pick me up from the airport. 
That was she did. Yeah, she sort of. They must have quite a few stuff. I think it's about seven or eight. Yeah, seven or eight. Yeah. It's in the old um, offices that my dad used to. Yeah. I wanted my kids to know what's going on in the world. I hope what I've done is teach them about respect, loving, and be kind, and be helpful. But I'd like them to get a much wider view of the world and what's there and what shouldn't be there and what they should do and that. But that will be up to them in their own lives to make up their minds. Stop the tour, it's not too late. Stop the tour, it's not too late. It's been around for a while. Yep. And then one, two, three, four, whether what your racist tour is mm. and how it's going to be done. It was pretty good. <laughs> Amanda. Amanda, and then there was lots of little Africans. And I remember being really embarrassed. Hey, John, because it was followed on New Zealand, it was probably saying African words really badly. So I remember That's everyone nice. was supposed to yeah, charge really well, like Springboks um, tour, I did go to those ones. I took them um, to those ones. I also remember that um, the, uh, the march people who were responsible will put all of us mums with our prams in the middle so that if anything happens or throw something that all the, the mums and their kids are in the middle of the march, um, not um, outside the, uh, the where someone might throw something. You were really small but I do remember that at that march that we went past a pub and people were throwing bottles mm. into um, the crowd, and we and that's we bottles. Can, yeah, mm. beer bottles, mm. put drunks, because there was a whole lot of us were kids, and they moved all of us into the middle, mm. and all the um, right. adults and men on the, and on the sides. Yeah, can you remember that? No. Yeah, yeah. I Dad don't was that. like, Mum was like, Ooh. I've got three children and five grandchildren. Christine was with Human Rights for some time, but she's now working for another organisation as a special communications person. Did you see the place where we stayed? Helen is involved with her school in Western Springs in Auckland. She is also a dean there. She is involved with the community of Pacific Island and Māori and organising cultural activities. John rides for also the Uso riders, a Samoan group of men and women riding to support awareness for cancer in the Pacific community. When I think about the Mao, the independence movement, and also uh, my mother and the way in which she has brought us up, I think about the importance of standing up for yourself. I also think about the importance of standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves and being a voice for those people who can't speak for themselves. And it's certainly left an imprint on my being and my outlook on life as well. And once again, from a very really early age and being involved with the various movements that my mother has been involved with, has really had an impact and a positive and profound effect on me as, a, as an individual. This is my mum. She was the head of nursing, wasn't and she? One, at one stage when she was a little bit younger, but she didn't retire until she was 70. That's another one of the women's mao. And our family is just on the corner there uh, from this place. And the, one today. the last one. <laughs> yeah. It's a legacy of standing up for your rights. In, in Samoa, it was about human rights. It was basic human rights. Um, that our families were being denied. So, fast forward to New Zealand, um, I remember marching to this place, to Parliament, from when I was a child with my mum. She took us on lots of marches. Um, and since then, we've taken our children on the foreshore and seabed march, because my kids are Māori New Zealanders. When I retired in 2010, I had a two-year assignment in Vanuatu as a teacher trainer. 
it's about people, where people are, and uh, compare them with uh, my own life and what I've got with my own children. It's things that you come to appreciate how much you've got and how much other people need help. I'm still a member of uh, Volunteer Services Abroad, as well as uh, I'm very involved with Red Cross in Wellington. Mum's relentless, I suppose, and that's what it, it, it sort of um, reminds me that, you know, just keep going. Any day of the week, my mother will be at some community meeting, at some protest, um, finding out what's going on, um, standing up for other elderly people in the community. So our children, have that inside of them. They understand that it is not just a right, but it's kind of part of their job to challenge and to stand up for their rights. My grandson, Hedewini, who's at Victoria University, he's now a member of the Victoria Student Red Cross up there, which is really lovely. He's just started with um, the Community Law Society um, group there in Wellington. Uh, as a volunteer. He's also a fluent Māori speaker and uh, he's doing Samoan language as well. He's introduced himself as I'm a Māori man when he was doing his uh, Samoan speech. We didn't understand a lot of our own history growing up in Samoa and at school, but I think those histories of these women um, our Pacific women and Māori women, we also need to talk about it ourselves. I think I'd like to um, thank all of you for letting me do this, telling my story about Samoan women. Tēnā koutou irirangi te motu i te pūtia tautoko kā rawe.